Hi, welcome back to P3. Today we're going to look at unit 2.3 composite functions. Okay, so let's look at this function here. This is essentially when we combine two functions together. So fg of x, and what it means is that you find an f of g of x. Okay, so what that means in itself is that you'd find g of x first and substitute that answer into f of x. So imagine for an example we had f of x and this is equal to 3x squared and g of x is equal to 5x minus 1. So what I'll do is I'll look at it numerically first and then we'll look at it algebraically. So, if I had to find what fg of 2 was, what that means is, I'm first going to find g of x, or g of 2 I should say. So that's 5, lots of 2, minus 1. So that's 9. So fg of 2 is the same as f of 9. As g of 2 is 9. Now that I know that, I can then go work this out. So this is 3 times 9 squared. 9 squared is 81 times 3 is 243. And that is it done. Okay, same functions. I've just gone to a new page. Let's look at it the other way around. Say, g f of 2. So for this I'd have to find f of 2 first. So 3 lots of 2 squared. 2 squared is 4 times by 3 is 12. So this is the same as now g of 12. So it's 5 lots of 12 minus 1. 5 twelves are 60 minus by 1, 59. Now, sometimes you might see gg of, I don't know, 3. And what that means is you apply g of x and then apply it again. So, if I apply g of 3, I would get 5 lots of 3 minus 1. So that's 14. So this is now the same as g of 14. So I would do 5 lots of 14 minus 1. 5 14 is 70 minus 1, so 69. And that's how I deal with uh, numbers in my composite functions. Now let's look at how we combine them together algebraically. So if I have to do, say, fg of x, that means I'm putting that g of x inside the f of x. So we're looking at f of 5x minus 1. Okay, and then when I look at my function here, I'm going to replace the x's with 5x minus 1. So it's 3 dots of 5x minus 1 squared. And that's my function. Now, I should then go ahead and expand it and simplify. So let's do that now. It's 5 minus 10x plus 1. And then multiply everything by 3. And there it is. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Let's do maybe f of f of x so that means I'm putting that 3x squared back into essentially like that 3x squared I'm putting it back inside that function so I'm looking at f of 3x squared so 3 brackets 3x squared squared so 3 squared is 9x squared is x to the power 4 3 nines are 27, x to the 4. Okay, and that's, I'm going quite quickly, but that's just how we solve it 
or how we can combine two functions or two or more functions if you really wanted to that is essentially how I would combine them algebraically incidentally in your books this f f of x you will sometimes see it written as f squared x okay this means the same thing okay let me give you a few to try now Okay, it's the first few answers, just pop them up quickly. Um, e I'll go through very quickly. So f g of x, f g of x, just f, and we're going to substitute x squared into it. 3x squared minus 2. And then f, we need to solve this. So f g of x, we've already got 3x squared minus 2. We need g f of x as well. So I'll do that over here in black. g f of x. So it's g of 3x minus 2. So it's 3x minus 2 squared. So if I'm solving, f g of x equals that. So it's this equals 3x minus 2 squared. So let's expand. 9x squared, 6 minus 12x plus 4, 3x squared minus 2. So we've got 6x squared minus 12x plus 6, and that equals to 0. So I can divide by 6x squared minus 2x plus 1. Or this could be written as x minus 1 squared. So solving it should be x equals 1. We'd often say twice um, when we're looking at some graphs and things like that. Um, but that's for another time. Okay, so f squared x is the same as f f of x. This f where I substitute one plus I substitute one over x plus one into one over x plus one. Kind of getting tongue-tied here. Okay, so next step then, so one over one over x plus one plus one. So let's deal with that on the bottom. So we have 1 over x plus 1, we want them both over that, so it's going to have to be an x plus 1 over x plus 1. So that gives me 1 over 1 plus x plus 1 on the top there, x plus 1 on the bottom. Then when I am, um, oh, let's simplify this first, 1 over x plus 2 over x plus 1 and then if I'm dividing by a fraction it's the same as multiplying by the inverse of that so that would be 1 multiplied by x plus 1 over x plus 2 so that is just x plus 1 over x plus 2 and that is then what we were required to show so let's have a look at this one, g f of x, so we're going to put f of x into g of x, e to the 5x. And then if I use my rules of logs, I can bring the 5x down, so that's going to multiply and become 20x ln e, and ln e is just the value 1, so we've got 20x. Let's look at b the other way round, f g of x. So this one e to the 5 times 4 ln x. 
So this is e to the 20 ln x. So that will become e ln x to the power 20. So this is just x to the power 20. So let's work out t squared of x first. So that's 5 minus 2 and then it's 5 minus 2x inside that. 5 minus 10 plus 4x, so 4x minus 5. And then let's look at t of x squared. So this is 5 minus 2x squared, so it's 25 minus, 10 minus 20x plus 4x. And we've got, so 4x minus 5 minus 25 minus 20x plus 4x. Sorry, and that should be squared, Mr. Out there. Uh, and this equals 0. So 4x minus 5 minus 25 plus 20x minus 4x. And I always like to keep that bracket in there, especially when I'm dealing with like a negative sign here, just to avoid any silly mistakes, especially when you're doing this under exam pressure. Now I'm going to simplify and take everything onto the right side. So 4x squared minus 24x plus 30. And then I'd divide by 2 here just to make my quadratic a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, let's try and factorise first 2x and x. Now it doesn't look like this one factorises so I need to use the formula there. So I'll just work this out. Uh, I'm actually just going to work this out in my calculator quickly just to save a little bit of time. So we get 3 plus or minus root 6 over 2 as my two solutions there. Um, feel free to make a note in the comments if you want me to actually put that into the formula for you. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So if we look at A, my range is between minus 8 and 12. So the range of g of x is up to and including 12, down to and including minus 8. I will just make that look a little bit better here. Minus 8, g of x, 12. Um, now part B, I mean some of these you don't always have to even solve anything. So we're looking at g, g of 0. And what I can see straight away when x is 0, g of x is 12. So this is the same as g of 12. Now since there's no obvious value for 12 here, for me to work it out, I need to work out essentially this line so that then I can work this part out. Now for that I need the gradient, actually I'm just going to use this in black. So I'm going to need the gradient. So the gradient is changing y over changing x. So that's 5 minus 12 over 14 minus 0. So we got negative 7 over 14, so we're looking at minus a half, which makes sense. Uh, so my equation here would have to be y equals minus a half x, and then it crosses at 12, so plus 12. Now it's quite easy for me to solve this one. All I need to do is substitute 12 in, so g of 12 is going to be minus a half times 12 plus 12. Half 12 is 6, negative 6, so this is going to be negative 6 plus 12 
is just six. And then I'm just going to jump onto a new page for the final part, uh, part C here. So we're looking at GH of 7. So GH of 7. So let's have a look. G of 7 first is 2 lots of 7 minus 5 over 10 minus 7. So 14 minus 5 is 9 over 3. So it's 3. So this g of g h of seven is going to be the same as g of three. Looking at my graph again, it's on this right hand part of the graph, so it's just the same equation I've already worked out. Nothing new to find here. So y equals minus a half three plus twelve. So minus 1.5 plus 12 so we've got 10.5 okay and this is my gh of 7 hope you enjoyed the video and you found it um, useful if you did please like and subscribe um, and i'll see you soon